Hey guys, I figured if a picture is a thousand words, then a video must be at least a thousand plus one. So here's another quick one for you guys. I got Vim running on the right side and Emacs on the left, and the same grunt file open in both. So what you're seeing on the right side here is Syntastic telling me that I got three errors. So these errors are sourced from JS Hint. so it's telling me on line one that, that I should be using the function form goose strict, line three that requires not defined. And uh, here, let me just show you here. So I'm going to say that request is equal to 1 to 3. I'm going to save the file. And then it'll tell me that I am missing a semicolon. So you may or may not have caught that, but that actually blocked the UI as it was doing it. So let me make it a little bit more obvious. I'm going to save and hit J a whole bunch of times. So as you can see, all the J's at the bottom of the screen are now artifacts of, of this buffer, um, of the screen buffer. So, so this is something that's pretty common in Vim plugins because there's really no easy way to do background processes or asynchronous operations. So let's take a look at how Emacs deals with this. So let me reload this file to make sure I got the latest. So I'm going to put the semicolon and save. So as you can see, it's pretty much instant. I don't deal with um, it blocking the UI at all. And an another nice thing about this is I can actually say, you know, x equals 1, 2, 3. And without saving, it will tell me that, you know, x is not defined or you know, let me define it here and and say x equals 3, 2, 1. And then from here, it'll tell me that, hey, I'm missing a semicolon. And same thing here. So the nice thing here is it's actually checking things on the fly. So the package I'm using is called FlyCheck. And the experience it gives is pretty much close to what you would expect from an IDE, like Visual Studio or IntelliJ, where it basically just tells you all these syntax errors as you're typing. So the next thing I want to show is uh, searching things in the background. So let me delete the buffer on both sides. So delete that, delete that, and let me double check the current working directory. So I do have Linux on both sides. So let me do this on, on the Vim side first. So what I'm going to search for is I'm going to act for the word cool. And basically as it's doing this, uh, why is, and there it goes. So as you can tell, this is kind of slow. Uh, I need to wait for it to to finish before I get control of Vim again. It's going, going, going. And then finally I get my list of results. So that took quite a quite a while for it to, to turn through. So if your project is large, doing these type of searches with Vim is quite difficult. So the next best thing that you can do is use something like dispatch. So what you can do here is say dispatch, I'm looking for a pool, and I'm gonna say no color. So what this does is actually Oh, so I still have control of my cursor, as you can see I'm moving around. But what it's doing is it's opening a tmux split in the bottom right. It's going to do all the searching, and then when it's done, it will parcel the standard output and put it into a split like so. Now the problem here is uh, the standard output, right? So I can't do a CNX on it or, or whatever because it doesn't understand that. So let's take a look at how Emacs does this. So again, I'm going to do a search here. I'm going to search for... Um, let's say, look, I'm going to search for 4. So this is going to take a very, very long time. So as you can see, I still have my cursor. I can still move it. But also at the bottom, if I move to the bottom, you'll see that it's running. But on this buffer, while it's searching, it's clearly taking forever to search for every occurrence of 4. Um, I, can inter I can interact with this, with this buffer here. I can even hit enter here, and it'll open up the buffer on the top. So as you can see, this is quite useful to be able to search things in the background and still be able to, to work on what you're doing. So let me just kill this now because um, I don't want to be searching for over the entire Linux kernel. So the last thing I want to show is multi-monitor support. So for this one, I'm going to have to open the GUI version of Emacs. And uh, basically the way that Emacs deals with this is they have a concept called a frame. And what a frame is is basically a single window. So right now I have a frame open on the left side. So what I'm going to do now is open up a new frame and I'm going to say Linux, copying, and voila. So I have a second frame now. So let me move this to the right side. And so I've got my cursor on the right side. I'm going to move it around. And then of course I can just hit some buttons and then now I'm on the left side. So by having two separate windows and still being able to control things back and forth basically solves the multi-monitor problem. So these are just a couple examples of where I think Emacs really excels in terms of how it deals with background processes, asynchronous operations, and multi-monitor support. So that's all I got for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you guys next time.